So as we move towards the end of the course, I want to just pause for a minute and discuss the specific topic of research ethics. The purpose here is to give you a background in the ethical dilemmas associated with uh, conducting research. Uh, so you have an understanding about how this research is created um, and the background uh, from the perspective of the researcher in particular. So we'll describe a little bit about why researchers need to be ethical, discuss uh, informed consent and the role of the IRB, and then understand the negative impact of unethical research and reporting. So when we talk about uh, ethics and research, obviously if we are using the information that we're finding from these research articles in order to implement uh, things for clinical decision, it needs to be beyond reproach and not uh, come at the cost of other individuals or um, be, have any possibility of problems that would affect uh, future individuals. So we really are looking, when we talk about ethical decision making, both fairness to the participants as well as fairness to the public. So in order to do this, it really does require that absolute trust in the publication process that you know that not only is the research being done in a uh, fair way to all those that are being, um, that are part of the research process, but also that we can interpret those findings in a way that allows us to drive future decision making. And so those are going to be the two main components associated with everything. But first and foremost of highest primacy is the need to protect subjects. And that's what a lot of the research ethics um, guidelines are um, around for. And we'll talk a little bit about where those came from and why. But the reason that there uh, needs to be the discussion of ethical roadblocks is because it very much is a... Uh, real life uh, ethical dilemma for a lot of individuals. Um, research uh, is a highly competitive environment and there are limited uh, fundings, uh, sources, resources, and lab space to, in, uh, to produce the research. There are a lot of jobs that are specifically des designed to uh, require a significant amount of research and a significant amount of funding. So it's a highly competitive field. And as such, you can uh, understand the temptation to try to get ahead in less than ethical manners. Specifically in the uh, athletic training, sports medicine, and human subjects world, is our research requires the ability to recruit participants to uh, be subjects within the research. And so it's a lot harder when you have to convince other individuals to participate in your research with usually very little benefit to them directly. And so this challenge to recruit participants has led individuals to do research on uh, other individuals uh, without getting their consent. And so as far as ethical mistakes, there can be um, mistakes or ethical problems associated with uh, researchers conducting uh, research and failing to truthfully report the methods or the results. And even there has been some uh, high profile uh, studies that have ended up being completely fabricated and there was never even a study conducted. The third component with uh, ethical dilemmas is the idea of plagiarism as far as copying another person's work and not giving credit to them. Um, all these are potential problems associated with the research uh, process. And so as such, some of the main principles of uh, research ethics is uh, first and foremost this need for the Institutional Review Board uh, as part of some of the historical measures that have been um, conducted over time that we'll talk about shortly. Uh, each institution that uh, conducts human subjects research is tasked with creating a review board that will review all research uh, that involves human subjects to make sure that the human subjects are uh, protected and there are no abuse of subjects. Um, 
Also, uh, simultaneous submission of articles for publication is uh, unethical. Every single uh, journal abides by this from the standpoint that they want to publish original research and uh, uh, simultaneously submitting research to more than one journal uh, wastes uh, research uh, resources. And so uh, each author agrees that they will only submit the article to one journal at a time. So until um, a journal creates a final decision regarding publication, or rejection, uh, that journal has retained the publication rights and you can't submit it somewhere else. Finally, uh, the idea of authorship comes into play. And this is particularly important um, for a variety of different reasons. Uh, first and foremost is that it is important for fairness to the research team that all those that are in involved um, have received uh, appropriate recognition for their work. And so this idea of ghost authorship is when uh, an individual uh, specifically leaves out other members of the research team uh, from publication. There's oftentimes a lot of fighting over who becomes the primary author because that's the position of greatest respect. And so uh, authorship means that you have to have contributed uh, significantly to the work. You can't just do one part of the research and be considered an author. But at the same point in time, it's often difficult to see who contributed the most to that. And then a, uh, another authorship problem that comes into play occasionally is this idea of ghost writing, where a usually a firm uh, that has a financial stake in a uh, research project will conduct the research and then publish it under another individual's name to try to eliminate the idea of potential bias. As we went through our critical application of the research, right, we were looking for potential bias from funding sources. One way a uh, unethical author could get around this would be to uh, publish, uh, have another individual publish the information so the information gets out representing a positive uh, outlook for the company that um, the individual works for while still uh, making it look like it was free of any potential bias. And so the six principles of ethics that have really come out and uh, create the standard for everything is first is beneficence, uh, and this is the idea that the project should be free um, from any problems associated with that and should benefit the participants or uh, population. So the idea that we should not do research just for its own sake. The research needs to have a stated purpose that will benefit either the participants or the population, um, preferably both. Non-malfeasance states that you do no harm, taking uh, its step from the Hippocratic Oath, the idea that participating in research should at minimum not harm any individuals, but uh, should uh, ideally uh, benefit them if at all possible. Justice states that all uh, participants need to be treated equally and fairly. Um, this becomes somewhat difficult in the idea that sometimes we are giving treatment to some groups and not to other groups, but it all needs to be done fairly and they need to be aware of this fact that they may be in a placebo group or not doing uh, different aspects. And if there is a case where there needs to um, be a situation where someone is failing to respond and they're getting significantly worse and we're withholding treatment, we should uh, exclude them from the study and allow them to uh, get the best treatment possible. Fidelity states that you never need to put the research above the participant's welfare. This idea that we cannot uh, um, do any harm uh, just for the sake of the research. Um, veracity states you should never deceive patients. That goes back to this idea of justice and fairly as well. And then confidentiality, the ability to uh, keep people's information unidentifiable so that way they're not um, uh, subject to any sort of negative ramifications from that standpoint. As far as all of these uh, things come through, there uh, most of these came uh, shortly after World War II, where there was a lot of research um, 
done by the Nazi party um, on individuals that did not have the ability to consent in concentration camps and the different studies you've probably heard of that. And the Nuremberg Code was the first one to come out of that. And the main component of the Nuremberg Code was that all human subjects have to give voluntary consent. Right? And so this idea is that they have to have the ability to actually uh, decide to or to not participate. And so uh, participate or consent with individuals that are underage or in some sort of a situation where they may not be able to give consent, particularly prisoners or possibly the elderly, where they may not be able to understand or uh, there might be some form of coercion is uh, very tricky. And so you have, to, in order to get voluntary consent, you have to prove that the individuals associated with the study are able to uh, decide for themselves whether or not they would like to participate. Right? Um, the Declaration of Helsinki also went a little bit farther, but to say that it not only needs to be voluntary, but it needs to serve to a benefit. This is that you cannot do research just for its own sake. Right? The Belmont Report really then became the um, gold standard for summarizing the protections of ethical considerations, all these different components, and formulated the IRB, which is <clears throat> responsible for overseeing and doing these things. Lastly, as far as research uh, requirements and ethical decision making, it's important to understand that any sort of research published needs to be trustworthy and free of conflicts. Now, it's possible that, you know, and still all right, for potential biases to uh, be uh, included. It doesn't necessarily mean that just because uh, there's funding from a corporation that that research is not appropriate, but it needs to um, be disclosed so that way the uh, readership can understand that. And obviously misinterpretation of uh, data um, is unethical uh, from the standpoint that it w might lead people to make decisions um, based on uh, faulty or fraudulent conclusions from that data. And so it needs to be uh, trustworthy if it's going to be uh, considered research and publishable. And then obviously uh, authorship rights need to be respected.